Well, hello there. I bet when you woke up this morning that you never think that you would find yourself here at the pits of all of the internet and YouTube, but here you are. I'm glad you made it here, and I'm certainly thankful for your attention and your eyes. So this video is the last of four videos. I did four videos covering this epic road trip of where I started in Georgia almost 30 days ago at this point. Went to Montana, to Los Angeles, back to Georgia now, and I've been thrifting along the way. And that's been the most exciting part is finding and discovering small town and big town America all alike and seeing it through the eyes of thrift stores. I found some amazing stuff at some really cool thrift stores all across America. And I've been documenting it. So this number, we're at about 925 bucks. You'll see it as we, uh, as we go through this video. That's estimated net profits. That's not uh, hard and true numbers all across the way. Those are just estimated net profits. That's after selling fees, purchase price, shipping costs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So keep that in mind when you're seeing these numbers. And what we're basically doing is I've been trying to thrift along the way just to to cover some of the the damage and mitigate the loss on this epic road trip and what it has done damage to my wallet that I have put in my butt pocket. Not in my butt, that would be weird. If I put my, my wallet in my butt, yeah, that'd be, that'd be a pretty shitty thing to do. Started my day here in Missoula, Montana at Tandem Bakery and Cafe. Loved the food here, one of my favorite meals on the entire trip. And they also sell books, vintage books, which is really cool. Five bucks a pop, I found this Pippi Longstocking for five bucks. 1950 first edition, it sells from like 50 to 75 bucks. So don't be afraid, wherever you are, look for stuff to sell, even if you're in the bathroom. Then I find these bison, Halfway between Pippi Longstocking and the thrift store. Apparently, they were looking for as good as deals, just like me. Uh, thrift store, this one's Back to the Future here. We're going to Idaho. This was in Idaho Falls. And it was a fun little thrift store. This is uh, continuing the trend of nice, organized, clean thrift stores. It was a little uh, overpacked, but hey, you know, when it comes to making money and these deals, uh, the more the merrier. I found these Boyd's Bears, 50% off all Boyd's Bears. So I thought I was going to have a fun little find here because they had multiple shelves of these these Boyd's Bears. But then I started looking them up and they really don't have any value. So I thought, well, what if I buy all of them? And even even lots of, of 35 to 50 are only selling for like 150 or 200 bucks. So they must have had, I mean... 50 to 75 of these things so unless they could have done like 25 bucks which that just wasn't going to happen um I, I left those behind boyd's bear is not not valuable uh, rainforest cafe mugs these are hit or miss um i've sold some in the past but it's been a very long time uh if you find them cheap enough like a quarter or so especially you can find the right ones different ones have different values but keep an eye out for rainforest cafe mugs because there are some some shockers out there and then i find this mug and this was only 50 cents i think lang and wise anything with cat art that looks interesting i always check out and had high quality mug and it's going to sell for about 20 bucks i got it for 50 cents i don't look for coffee mugs everywhere i go but when i'm on the road uh, at new stores especially i do kind of look at stuff that i don't typically look at all the time i found this travel blocus game it's got a really high rank on amazon uh, but blocus used to do better for me um but I left that behind because of the high sales rank. Found this taboo game. I'm going to make about $8 on this game. Um, just as a quick, simple, you know, I love finding finding board games. So continuing that trend. Sony Dream Machines. I found five to six to seven Dream Machines on this thrift trip, which is crazy. I, le I actually I didn't, I left these ones behind because they were pretty dirty and scuffed up. But again, it's another based on the make and model of the particular Dream Machine of Sony. But uh, check them out. If you can get them for cheap, they, they tend to st still do pretty well. Found this. This just had a high quality look hanging on the wall. And it was. It was a Roxy brand. Never heard of it. But I could tell it had some value just by looking at it. It just looked and felt like high quality material. And it was. Uh, I picked it up for five bucks. And I can sell it for roughly 25 ish bucks. Now, VHS. I'm always on the look for sealed VHS. And I found this Dumb and Dumber. And. If you're unaware, there's like this growing trend of collectors, and I found that this one graded sells for about 125 bucks or so. I'm gonna send this in to get graded and just see because some of these some of these graded VHS, especially in the nerd world or had some sort of cult following or, or its favorite movies, just these classics can go for thousands of dollars. So I'm gonna try this. I've never done 
a VHS grading before. I got it for 50 cents. So uh, I'm going to see what happens. I'll send it in and, and maybe if I can get like a hundred bucks, that's pretty cool. After escaping Idaho, I drove through Utah looking for a thrift store, but there was none open since it was Sunday and it was 119 degrees in Nevada. And as I was making my way here to Los Angeles, where this is where it all began. This Goodwill is the first Goodwill. This is where my career started, where I this is the first store that I went to with the intent of buying something to resell online. And this particular Goodwill on this corner is where it all began about 12 years ago. And I think it's a, such a fun thing to revisit this store. And it was really loud. And this Goodwill was the first that I explored. And I found this little humble figurine. It was like $2.79 or something like that. I ended up selling it. A few days later, maybe it was the following week, and I sold it for a little over $14 on Amazon. And this is where it all started. I'm gonna, I haven't been here in a, in a long, long time, so I thought it'd be fun to go back inside where it all began, where all this crazy, this YouTube channel wouldn't exist. I wouldn't have the, the success in, in my, both my personal and professional life. I don't think had this motorcycle accident not happened to me. And uh, it's so cool to go back to the roots back to the original space that really started this reselling journey and I'm so thankful for it. So I'm gonna head inside. It's been many a year since I've been in these catacombs of this particular Goodwill. And as we all know, Goodwill prices have been going up the past five or six, seven years. Plus this is in Los Angeles. I expected the prices to be uh, kind of outrageous and I was pleasantly surprised they weren't. They were very reasonable. Uh, this is an affluent part of LA, so I was a little shocked that the prices were really good. But there's the there's the end cap. That's where I found my very first thing that I ever sold online, and it was a little Hummel figurine. I think I got it for like two dollars and seventy cents, and I sold it for just about fifteen. And that's how it all began. So we're going to the media, and I'm looking for anything that's new in the package, any sealed DVDs. I'm just kind of pulling those out first. This caught my eye. It was three bucks, and I'd never seen this before. Um, not exactly sure what it is, but it sells for 45 bucks brand new. Um, so I picked that up for, for three bucks. That'll, that'll make some decent cash. And now I'm going through and just pulling out anything sealed that I find to look up. And I am scanning it first with my Amazon app just to see if I'm restricted, if I can sell it, what its value is to just get a generic idea of how to, uh, continue forward. None of these ended up making the cut. I uh, passed on on all of those. 4K Ultra HD. Generally, these are, are worth money. This one was only like 11 bucks brand new, which is a little shocking. Now, the 4K uh, Blu-rays are, are usually pretty good, so keep an eye out for them. I'm also looking for obscure titles. I found this Pilates Gaim, um, and it's not going to make a lot. So I'm going to make three or four bucks, so I picked that up. Then we found this rack and some, you know, Squishmallows. They're kind of all over the place. I didn't expect this was a large one, four bucks, and it sells for about 20 ish. So I passed on this. Just, it's too, it's, it's just too big and kind of a, a bum to try and sell that thing. Cry babies. That's kind of what I'm doing right now is just crying about it and complaining. I was restricted. It sells for 25 bucks on Amazon. Otherwise I would have picked it up. It would have been a good deal. Oh, there's a good froggy. Then I find this coffee, this Mickey Mouse. This is from Disney World. You know, Disney brand Mickey Mouse coffee. Never heard of it. Paid five bucks for this. And I think I'm going to get about 20 to 25 bucks for this. So I picked that up. Uh, pretty cool find. Again, mugs, looking at coffee mugs. I don't tend to look at these everywhere I go, not in my home space, but I did find this, uh, Germany Starbucks mugs. Anytime you see a Starbucks mug specifically with cities on them, always look them up. Uh, some of them have value, some don't. This one did. I picked it up and sold for five bucks and it's came at home and it made me some money. Then I found this vintage Amano time, uh, time card punching machine. And I always look up vintage stuff if I haven't looked up vintage stuff before. Some has value, some doesn't. Uh, I left this behind, but I did learn that these can have real value. Some of these vintage Amano time clocks are selling for 250 bucks and then some are selling for 50 bucks. Um, I left this one behind because I kind of had a feeling it wasn't one of the more expensive ones, but I could have very well bought it, and, but they were asking 25 bucks. That's why I passed. Then I found this. Didn't have a sale. It has a really high sales rank, almost, almost a million in toys, which is crazy, but that's also because it's out of stock. So I ended up picking this up. It does sell for about 25 bucks on eBay. So I picked this up because I'll get to make my own price on Amazon. I checked camel, 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 and I found that it is selling for about $29 this year. So I think I can make some money. So that was pretty cool. I found some really cool stuff going back to the place where it all began. That's always fun. Do you guys remember any resellers out there? Do you remember 
the first time you went out, whether it was a garage sale or an estate sale or flea market or a thrift store just like me, do you remember where you began? Uh, that'd be cool to hear. Share your experience in the comments because I'd love to hear about how you guys got started. And there was so much stuff in that Goodwill. Uh, I could have spent probably a good hour, hour and a half in there going through everything. It was just overflowing with merch. But again, I'm on vacation and I'm actually on my last day here. So here in Los Angeles, this is, uh, I'm turning around and going back south. So it's been a pretty epic trip and now we're headed back. But what a way to, to end the thrifting journey by, by doing it where it all begins. So we're wrapping up the road trip with about $1,050. There's probably going to be another two or $300 of stuff that I don't know how to value and stuff that I actually didn't make it into the video for some reason. So I'm going to end up with like $1,300 or $1,400 overall. Certainly not going to cover the cost of the entire trip. However, it's going to go a long way in, in paying for a portion of this trip. And that's so cool that, that I can get on the road, find thrift stores, and help it cover the cost of seeing all these fantastic fantastic, uh, truly beautiful places all across this land. I really want to thank you guys. If you've been following along, thank you for checking out these videos, these travel videos. The last, there's four total. So if you like this, you found any value, uh, there's three prior to this, all about this, this long road trip from Georgia to Montana to Los Angeles and back. And it's been three weeks, almost four weeks on the road. And uh, it's been such a good time. And I hope that this has inspired some folks out there to get out on the road and do some road trips of your own and make it a thrifting road trip. Get out there, find some thrift stores. It's a great way to discover this land, uh, a fantastic way to help mitigate the cost of the damage that it does on your wallet and, and, and just get out there and see America and see thrift stores and make some money along the way.